Hello friends and welcome. My name is Duma and today I'm bringing you one of my most requested videos. After I started making the easy PvE one bar videos, I received an outpouring of support and thanks from the ESO community members who really appreciated the builds. My original intention was to help newer players get acclimated to ESO's way of doing things and give a new alternative to seasoned players who may be struggling a bit. But people reach out to me to let me know that more people beyond that scope have been helped by the build, such as those with manual dexterity issues due to age, disabilities, or other various reasons that they just aren't able to navigate the two bar swapping system well. Also, there have been players who just simply don't like the two bar system and enjoy playing the game more with one bar. I just wanted to take a quick second and let all those people who have been enjoying the easy PVE one bar builds know that I will continue to play test and make these builds for you with different classes and setups so you can continue to enjoy the game in this capacity. That said, many people message me asking me for a Magicka Warden DPS build. Here it is, presenting the easy PVE one bar Magicka Warden build for solo players and simple PVE content. Let's dive in. This is our character overview. We have all six 64 points into Magicka, and we are a vampire for additional sustain, but it's absolutely not needed at all. We are using the Shadow Mundus, but the Thief Mundus will also work here since our spell crit is a tad on the low side. We will be using the Witch Mother's Potent Brew, and any Magicka potion will work just fine, as we have Major Prophecy and Sorcery both baked into the build. I'm in Orc Race here, due to that being what I had available on live servers, but I wouldn't recommend it for maximum efficiency. There are better races for Magicka classes, such as Breton and High Elf. However, for solo content and the softer side of PvE dungeons, any race will work just fine. Here is a basic, well-rounded CP setup for you to use. If you have less than 810 CP and are filling it out the tree as you go, this build mainly uses direct damage, not AoE damage, so you want a healthy amount of points and the Master at Arms tree to help support this. Always keep a portion and Thaumaturge, which helps with the AoE due to the overworld variant of the build we'll talk about shortly. As for gear, this is the exact gear setup as my one bar sorcerer for new players. You just cannot beat the strength of this setup for its cost for newer players. We're using the five-piece body Julian four-piece Magnus Helm shoulders and weapons, and the three-piece Ancient Grace jewelry set. The armor and weapons can be crafted or bought on guild traders relatively cheap, and the jewelry can also be bought on traders for relatively cheap. I tried quite literally every gear set I could get my hands on, on both live and PTS, and this entry-level setup just can't be beat in terms of output for the cost of players who have not yet gotten to the point of wearing monster sets. I came close with a few combinations of gear, but every time this setup parsed higher on target dummies. On a side note, we want the same enchant on both staves here as we will not be bar swapping during combat. One bar is for solo overworld content and one bar is for dungeons. This is essentially how your bar will look here and we'll talk briefly about each ability. Blue Betty. This is an ability you want to have up all the time. It is a source of magic to sustain, purges negative effects from you once every five seconds, and buffs you with major brutality and sorcery, increasing your weapon and spell damage. Birds of Prey. These are the iconic Warden Wings. They make you sprint fast upon activation with major expedition to help you navigate mechanics, travel around faster, and get out of bad situations better, and also buffs you with minor berserk, increasing your damage by 8%. Inner Light. This is from the Mage's Guild. This increases your maximum magicka, giving you even more damage, and gives you major prophecy, increasing your spell crit. You'll use this ability for dungeons. We will swap this ability out for overworld content, which we'll discuss here shortly. Deep Fissure. This is your big burst. This fires a line of shocks after a short delay that blasts enemies with solid AoE and single target damage. It also applies major breach, reducing enemy spell resistance by quite a bit. Force Pulse. This is your main spam. It does great single target damage and a bit of splash damage on our overworld setup, which we'll talk about here shortly. Eternal Guardian. This is our bear buddy. It tanks for us, it does damage for us, sometimes it does AoE damage, and it respawns automatically when it dies. It also has a strong execute when used on enemies below 25% health. Your rotation is very simple. Deep Fissure, Force Pulse, Force Pulse, Repeat. That's it. Add a light attack in between each cast, and that's the whole setup. Make sure you use two Force Pulses after each Deep Fissure key press. For overworld solo combat, Content, we'll make one small change. We'll swap out Inner Light with Arctic Blast. This ability has a lot packed in. It's a decent AoE, a strong self-heal, and an AoE stun. It also applies the Chilled Effect status, which now makes our Force Pulse spam do AoE splash damage for even more AoE damage. You'll see in the gameplay section here just how strong and effective this combination of abilities are. I'll leave you with some miscellaneous clips from my gameplay testing of this build, both solo farming public dungeons and in the Veteran Depths of Malatar dungeon, one of the top tier harder veteran dungeons. You'll have have absolutely no problem with it and it'll be a breeze for you and regular dungeons with this build. I hope you enjoy the build and it gets you where you need to be. If you like what you saw here, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps us to be able to continue to bring you more great ESO content. If you would like to see live gameplay, I'm a member of the Elder Scrolls Online official stream team and stream regularly at Dumaflitchie on Twitch. You can also follow me on Twitter for stream and YouTube update announcements. Both links will be in the description along with our Discord link if you would like to be part of our ESO community. We are both new player friendly and also have people who do PvE and PvE 
PvP at the highest levels. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. As always, wherever your adventures in Elder Scrolls Online takes you, I hope your travels are swift and your load is light. Until next time.